And now we have arrived at phase two of a UX research and design project, which involves doing four steps. The steps serve to support and guide the design in a particular direction. Step one is to produce the needs finding report. The first step involves doing the needs finding study, which was previously designed during phase one. The needs finding study provides information about the users and their needs. The study will provide general design ideas and a general concept. From the interviews, observations, and affinity diagramming report, a needs finding report can be produced. Interviewing about four to five users should be a sufficient number and will allow the researcher to find the needs and current practices employed by users. It is vital to record the interviews. Recording the interviews allows the researcher to effectively extract all the nuanced detail and then to analyze and organize the data systematically. The data extracted from the recorded interviews and observations can be synthesized according to the affinity diagramming method. And now, in regards to affinity diagramming, it's something that will allow the researcher to discover user needs, user practices to meet the needs, functionality needed, functionality to avoid. And the needs finding report needs to include things such as information on target users, participant descriptions, findings, relevant questions, did you find any requirements, were there other needs than originally thought, did the users face other problems than the problems suspected? Step two involves creating the design concept. The second step involves finding solutions that will meet the user needs. One way to do this is through sketching and ideation. Knowing the users, their needs, and a basic framework or guidelines for the design allows one to begin work in generating possible solutions through a broad set of sketches. The key is not to focus on developing high fidelity sketches on the very first few ideas that come to mind, but to be as open minded as possible and generate a lot of diverse ideas quickly. Quantity is key. The sketching and ideation process defines possible system displays and interactions. It is important to not get tied down to any one individual idea. Try to ideate or generate many different design solutions. Now, as part of this step, the researcher creates the design concept, or basically the initial sketches. Interaction images, which shows interactions with the design for the key tasks. And now we move on to step three, developing personas and scenarios. So the third step involves defining personas and scenarios. The personas can assist to help guide a design or define a direction for the design. Personas should be representative of possible users of the system. The personas need to have detail and complexity or they will not be useful. As for the scenarios, they will need to show what a successful interaction with a main task looks like. Scenarios represent principal tasks of the design. Most design projects will need at least two personas and at least one scenario for each persona. Of course, larger design projects will need more. And last, we're on to step four, which involves developing a competitive analysis. The fourth step involves doing a competitive analysis. The competitive analysis involves analyzing the strengths and weaknesses of competing products, competing services, and competing systems. The competitive analysis highlights the differences between competitors. The analysis produces solutions and recommendations, which can be incorporated into the design. Now, from a quick search of the internet, it usually becomes obvious that competitors have often come up with solutions to similar problems to the problems you're trying to solve. The goal is then to differentiate your solution to the solutions already offered on the marketplace. To accomplish this, a competitive analysis is performed, which allows the designer to guide the design towards providing a solution that is a little bit different than the solutions already offered. Now, one can use a two-dimensional table, and that can be used to highlight a competitor differences along the key metrics. And typically, you want to analyze and compare between three and four other competitors. 
The analysis helps to shed light on the most useful features, functions, design strengths, and design weaknesses of the competitors. The competitor analysis can help to bring forward interesting ideas. You may wish to incorporate some of the competitor's ideas assessed into your own design. Now that we've defined the second phase of our UX research and design project, it's time to review a sample phase two report. As part of the phase two report, we will continue to develop our research and design project called Simplified Investment Interface with Professional Data. The phase two report will consist of four sections, including a needs finding report, design concept, personas and scenarios, and a competitive analysis. Reviewing the report will give you a good sense of the type of information which must be included and how that information needs to be structured in order to implement a professional UX research project. Now let's go to the second report.